Welcome back to this week's Real Country File. This week is sponsored by Mayo, that make a wide range of cattle handling and equipment, drinkers and everything like that. Uh, I think you can see going across the bottom of the screen exactly what they make, so big thanks to them. Uh, this week's episode, Anzar is keeping warm in a polytunnel. I'm chatting to Tom Pemberton at Pete Marcus's sale, where there's a big auction of classic machinery. You just get one word, or he's complaining, or he's ranting. And then there's just me that's just a happy go Larry, do you know what I mean? But first, over to Steve, who's uh, in a cattle shed in Leicestershire. My name's Steve Pearce, uh, we're here in South Leicestershire. Um, we're a mixed, uh, mixed farm here. We have a diverse of sheep, uh, beef, a bit of arable, and uh, recently just gone back into dairy farming. When we started to uh, design this shed, we, uh, after a Quite a lot of research we decided to partner with Mayo and uh, get them to do all the uh, drawings and everything of the shed and since then we have found it and well a, fa a really good well, a fantastic journey of how um, how everything's been put together how well Mayo have helped us whenever we've needed them and how the cows have performed with Mayo products really uh, to go from a 7,000 litre herd that I've bought to probably now pushing 11,000 litres and hopefully on again. If, so, But yeah, the whole journey with Mayo has been brilliant and the product, you couldn't say anything better about them really. So when we decided to uh, go for this product, um, uh, Nivana from Mayo came out, came out to me and uh, we basically sat down and um, we sort of, oh well, I said I wanted a really, a shed that the cows felt comfortable relaxed and in a way get to over that 10,000 litres and uh, well she sat down we put it all on paper she sent it through to me and we just built it exactly how how it was so in a way prior to the robots this side it was all mayo the reason we went for uh, the mayo hybrid flex was we were looking I've always wanted flexible cubicles uh, but when we went round the shows um, I just find that these were the most strongest and robust cubicle. Uh, we had decided to, I wanted something with a bit more strength in it, that, but also gave the cows the comfort. And there's also a full 10 year warranty with them and it gives you that peace of mind. We were looking at a carving gate. So behind the robots over there, we've got two carving yards. So, and then there's a carving gate that splits them. And we just find it so easy. If you just need to carve the cow, just put her in. Well, even if you need to treat her for anything, you can take her there either way, and we just find it easy. Just put her in, click the gate, job done, tie it up, and you can work on the animal without any uh, stress to her or you and anything, really. When they came, the first couple of weeks, the cell counts were quite high um, that we brought, and we had to tube a few cows. And um, But since, uh, I think it was, I think they were averaging about around the 200s, 200 to 250 mark and but since then we have took them down I think the last recording was at 70 and a back to scan of eight it was the cows have to be honest not really looked back uh, I find them really the cows are always comfortable in them as if you look round I always yeah they're always lying down chewing the cud really happy and it just shows you with the milk yield the service from Mayo has been outstanding a few weeks ago you may have seen us preview um Pete Marcus's sale of classic machinery, tra classic tractors. Anyway, me and Tom Pemberton spent the day there and had a little bit of a chat about the state of farming, so here it is. So in a first for the Real Crunch file, it's a Butty Q interview. Um, two <laughs> legends of farming and, uh, and the internet, YouTube, uh, t TikTok, everywhere. Um, what lads, what, what can we say? Arable versus dairy, who's had the best winter? De definitely Tom, because the cows live inside. 100%. Well, to be fair, arable lads can have a bad year for one in 20. It's been good for ages, hasn't it? I thought you were going to say I had a good one because I sold you some straw. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, but you were very favourable on the price. I think you could have been worse, couldn't you? What was straw selling at the moment? Oh, it's well over 100 and something pound a tonne. Yeah, so we got a good deal. So I appreciate that with Ollie, but I've looked after him with good content by breaking his kit in the, uh, in the past, so it's worked out. There was a message last week on uh, one of your videos uh, Ollie, about uh, some yard brush that's like a project forever. Do you know what I mean? Is yeah, it going to happen? This morning. 
Yeah, I should have sold it and then bought you another one when you needed it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We need to do that. Um, I knew it was November 2002, 2003. No, it's November 2002. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's 18 months nearly. So, yeah, I have a yard brush at his place that I need to pick up. It's cost me two and a half grand. I still haven't done it yet. Is that yet. storage or just... <laughs> <laughs> he's got to he's got to make some money this year. Let's not talk about interest rates. No. Well, listen. The sun's <laughs> out. I believe some it's of your cows are out. Uh, well, uh, yes, we are. Our yeah. cows out first time this uh, year. They are five highlands, so I'm taking it, and I'm going to maze that field, so it doesn't matter what happens to it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a while until we let our cows out this year. It's just horrific. We're trying, but it's just it's hard because you see other farmers. That's a, that's the only thing about social media. I was saying it's hard because you see other farmers put some urea on. You kind of crack on. You've got some on now, haven't you? Yeah, we put some on um, three four weeks ago now. I need to put the next dose on because I've only got five days to get the rest on that's not abated. Oh, really? well, that's mad. Like, So obviously we watch this and I think, oh, I can crack on. I went empty in a field, nothing on my tractor, four-wheel drive, diff lock on and nearly got stuck. It's needs bigger tyres, doesn't he? <laughs> he does need bigger <laughs> He's got bigger tyres. So in terms of your millimetres, you're always on the rain gauge. Oh, where, where do we stack up compared to maybe last four or five years? Well... Last February, we've had this. We've had ten times more rain this February than last February, and we've had fifty mil of rain in the last fortnight. No, we've not. We've had fifty-five mil now. Fifty. And I just, don't use a rain gauge. I just look how big the puddles are in the field. Just look how far <laughs> up it, up your well as it comes. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. or a cow's knee. Do they have knees? So uh, they have bendy bits. Yeah. No, no, they don't have kneecaps, do they? I don't know. Do the back legs bend is, um, in the middle like a front one? The back legs, yeah, but it live backwards, don't they? They do that, don't they? Instead of doing like our knee goes, it goes the other way. It's like in a direction like, that's... Uh, weird, isn't it? So, so you're you. both like... The cows have kneecaps. I've, I've known you both maybe seven, eight years now. You've kind of... You keep overtaking each just, other just in various things. Just watch we don't lose the place in the queue. Yeah, yeah we've got to move up. Randomly butty, doing butty, an interview. Butty, butty van, butty queue interview. Um, how gutted are you that you got your BBC3 series, but Ollie's on a top trump. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. I saw <laughs> Absolutely devastated. Um, yeah, got it. I can't believe I wasn't on it. I might cry. But it's because of the quad track, wasn't it? Or are you actually on no, it personally? No. no, it's just me. It's the latest so alleged uh, climb. Remember shiny? Is it shiny? Yeah, probably because I'd be like an ultra shiny because everything I'd beat you on. Well, oh, look what? at that. That's, a, that's, a, that's <laughs> for the next pack. What's really weird is when we did the tractor run three years ago, I was like, we should do a top trump set of all the tractors on the tractor run. And I like made a mock up and everything, and I was like, "Oh, coming soon!" And like, I never did it. And then just randomly out of the blue, they emailed me and said, "Oh, we've we've put you on a top trumps card. I hope you don't mind, and we'll send you some." Absolutely class. It's nuts. Yeah. What Absolutely. about what, what about this today here at Peak? We move, move yeah, up, lads. Move up. We're losing <laughs> our place. But you killing me? Yeah, he's got, a marker. he's got a marker. He's got a marker. Are you looking there. at buying anything today? No, no, I'm skinned. No. It says no. <laughs> it says no. What about you? You had your eyes on one or two on your bit. Oh. Ooh. Oh, Already we, done? Yeah, we've taken Shear grab. Already done. <laughs> oh, don't talk about shear grabs. Um, I've broken another one. It's the third one we've broken. Um, and, yeah, so Dad's interested in something. Um, I could probably say it now. Is he here? No, he's in Nottingham. He's just had back surgery. Um, uh, well, that's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, he's interested in the case uh, 4240. Um, just it's got about 100 horsepower, but just over, and it just do a few jobs around the yard. Um, we'll get some cheap horsepower, but I think looking at the prices and stuff going, it's going to go a bit too expensive. So we have found a second option that he rung me this morning to tell me about. Right. But yeah, I am looking. I've got a budget. If it goes above the budget, okay. I'm letting go. You've got a budget and option. That's. Uh... I know. Yeah, fair play. But you can always get fair bent, play. bend the budget or push it. So in terms of farming barometer, we've got the legendary Mr. Grumpy and the legendary Mr. Happy. Yeah. Who's coming out? Who's Look at the smile <laughs> on his face now. <laughs> Somebody just called you Mr. Grumpy, didn't they? <laughs> did they? <laughs> they yeah. did, yeah. He said, it was, it, to be fair, it was me. All oh, right, OK. You text him, you just get one word, or he's complaining, or he's ranting, and then there's just me that's just a happy go Larry, do you know what I mean? Where are we? Where are we for... Spring 2024 in the joy scale. Out, out of 20, where are you out at? Out of the 20? Minute? Yeah. One, yeah. two. Zero. And I'm a happy guy. Like, there's nothing. You can't do anything. It's mad. Sorry yeah. to put it down, but two weeks of dry weather and we'll all forget about it. Cricket season in 20 days. It's got to get better soon. <laughs> Cricket season in 20 days. <laughs> well, 2020, we worked some ground on a Friday. Went back to it Saturday morning. It was too wet. Went back the Monday morning. It baked solid and it didn't rain until July. So it could happen. It could happen. Anything could happen. And on the two occasions that I've interviewed you in the past where you've complained about the Shock. rain, Complain. you've then had a drought for 
in yeah, two no, different every, years. Every, every time BBC Breakfast do something on the weather, it changes within <laughs> before I've even got home. Send them to me. <laughs> let's change it. Right, well, let, let's see if we can't buy some tractors or at least see some people that are getting let's, a bit of cheer out of buying tractors. At least put a bid on. Come on, put a bit of excitement in life. Just run them up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Pete, hey, Alex, yeah, Alex grown back. back. <laughs> Cheers, chaps. Cheers. So, Pete, we're getting last knockings now down lane. There's a yard full of sold metal up there. How's it gone? It's done all right. We got by, you know what I mean? Some have done more than we thought. Some's made what we thought. Some hasn't sold. But all in all, we're happy. You've had it. Metal You've had... into money, money into metal. That's the one. That's what well, you're doing. smiling. Yeah, I'm <laughs> smiling. I'm always smiling. So, the job's a good one. It'll yeah. be right. She's got some space now to buy some more, though. That's what he's <laughs> smiling <laughs> about. So, <laughs> let's drive we now to, and buy we some more. the shed so we can paint the floor. That's <laughs> yeah. all we can do. Paint the floor now. This next week, too, the and then we'll get by in again. Good day. Cheers, pal. was a great sale and stuff sold really well anyway uh, big big hello to Oscar who's 13 who's a regular watcher before we head over to Angela keeping warm in the polytunnel we all know farming's a bit depressing at the moment with the cold the rain the wind so I challenged myself to come and film somewhere that actually wasn't any of those three things so I've come tonight to a guided tour of a plant nursery and it's beautiful and warm so let's go and have a look round <music> acre site to start with that's um, less than a hectare for all you young farmers all us <laughs> older farmers know what we're talking about um, and we started out a green field site there was nothing here so dad built two prop houses just behind where we are now um, and then built some structures down the field and then when that was done he built the bungalow which is now a house and moved the family in in about 1973 1973 um since then we've pretty much knocked everything down and replaced it pretty much everything and we've bought an extra three acres of land next door so now we're five acres top to bottom two hectares and that includes the house all the greenhouses the structure the path the field and the ponds that we've got as well so we grow predominantly bedding plants though so they are annual plants they only last for 12 months not even 12 months um, so they need protecting from the cold, which is why we've got all the covered space, the polytunnels and the glass houses. So we, what we want to do tonight is to show you how we grow things so that you've got some indication of, of what we do and how mechanised we are, because we are not like Monty Don on a Friday <laughs> night. So we sow as many of the plants um, that we can. Some things it's just not economically viable for us to sow and some things come from cuttings. So obviously we don't sow those, but this is our seeding line. For the size of nursery that we are, we're very, very automated. So we sow into plug trays. This is a plug tray. Um, and these are the cells. Um, so this, like I said, this machine is all automated. So we stack the plug trays empty at the far end. It dispenses them one at a time onto a conveyor belt, runs it through that machine there, which fills them with compost along the conveyor under this little roller here, which is a dibbler. So it corresponds, each of the spikes correspond with the cells and it makes a little dibble, a little hollow in the top of the cell. Then it goes through here, which feeds the 
drops hopefully one seed into each cell, carries on on the conveyor, then it gets vermiculite put on top of it, then a watering tunnel behind Will and stacks them up at the end. So it covers it with vermiculite, waters it, and then hopefully stacks it off at the end. So these are marigolds that are French marigolds that are going from a, a 480 plug tray into a. Is it a 264? Oh God. There you go. I've put my glasses on. Uh, so they're in a 264 plug tray, well spotted Rachel, and they're going to go into a six pack. So it picks one plant out at a time. Well, each head picks a plant out at a time. <coughs> And moves it and puts it back where we want it to be. Yeah. So Rachel will put it on working speed. We just pop in here and um, and shut the door. Mind there are things on the floor, but if you just want to wander up this way, I'll stand here so you don't trip over the forklift. What's the first thing you notice when you come in here? It's humid, it's warm. Um, we have an air heater, but the air heater isn't on, it's only on frost protection. But we have underfloor heating in here, so if you put your hand on the, on the pavers, it's warmer. Can't, I can't hear it on at the moment. So... It's a big volume in here. There's no point heating the air because that's not where the plants are. So we put the plants put where the heat is on the floor because they all like having hot bottoms like the rest of us. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really noticeable in here earlier. So the majority of the plants in here are begonias. Um, yes, pretty much everything apart from some pelagoniums by there. So begonias like a lot of heat to get them going, get them established. Um, you can keep begonias over winter. They will sometimes survive outside in the garden. You can leave them in the greenhouse, um, but they need a lot of heat to get them to flower. If you have a, um, a begonia corm that you have at home that's in a, um, a hanging basket or in a pot or a tub, it will come up again next year, but it may be not flower until July or August. Whereas you can see these are flowering already. And that's just because they've got the heat on them. When we're unloading off a trolley, this is the same length as a trolley shelf. And you can pick 10 up at a time. You can put them on the shelf or you can take 10 off the shelf at a time. The shelves hold 20. So you do the first row and then you do the back row, which is fine when they've just oh, been pricked out and they're not heavy. But when they've been on the floor for a bit and they're watered. Um, the jumbos are particularly heavy, so that I don't think there are any in here. And when you've got a top shelf, flipping it makes your arms ache. So, so Derek, you're you're the man in charge <laughs> yeah. here then. And we've had a brilliant uh, tour, so thank you very much for, uh, no, for spending this round. It's but, a pleasure. Uh, in, in my ignorance, I was actually thinking that the weather perhaps wouldn't affect you because we're inside. But you've been saying that that's actually not the case. No, the, the weather affects us massively because if the weather's not good, the customers won't go in the garden. So our customers are very much solar powered. The sun shines, they'll be out. The sun isn't shining at the moment and the temperatures are really warm. So the plants are growing faster than people are buying them. So it's causing us a few headaches at the moment. Right, so it's that tricky balance of actually kind of halting the growth yeah, if you can yeah, yeah. Um, to wait for the, the actual the, the customers to actually want to buy from yeah, you. Yeah we're trying to keep things growing as dry as possible so they don't grow away but it is difficult it mm. is difficult. Yeah that's it okay um, but people can buy direct here on this site yeah, can they? Yeah they can yeah. yeah okay great so we'll we'll put the details um, up from your, your website um, on the bottom of the video and that's then uh, they can uh, click that link and, and have a look. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. 
Thanks, Angela, and everyone else who took part in this week's episode. Also, big thanks to Mayo, who do cattle handling equipment, drinkers, and everything like that. And some of the items are also grant qualifying. So check out their website. I think the link is below. That's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, have you had rain? Have you had dry weather? Let us know in the comments. It's currently dry here today, but it was raining yesterday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.